Ted and Dorothy got in trouble for throwing rocks on the tennis court. We did? Uh, yes. Tell absolutely. them where Vail is. It's uh, north and uh, west of St. George, up in the mountains. <laughs> and uh, well, I don't remember what, because I was kind of young, but we were camped out in a tent. Well, that's up the mountain. Yeah. Uh -huh. That wasn't the, in Vail. No, it was. It was close by. Dad was working up in the mountain somewhere, so we had a, we were all living in a big tent, and there was a stream, or I don't know if it was a little river or what there, but I went down there wandering one day, and Ted came and got me, and when he pulled me out of the mud, I lost one of my shoes. So somewhere up by Vail in the mud, that's There's true. a petrified shoe, because <laughs> I only come out of there with one shoe, which was a, an issue because uh, with the money we had, uh, you couldn't afford to buy another one. Couldn't afford to buy another one, so. Anyway, that's basically most of what I remember about Vail, because I was, who knows what year that was, does anybody? I don't remember. We'd have to look it up. I, I know our class, went to St. George to see the movie uh, uh, Seven Dwarfs. Snow White. Oh, Snow White Snow White. Seven Dwarfs. It was no. just, just released. And, that was, and we still overnight. Wow. Uh, the girls, While we were in Vail, your class? We went to St. George. Uh, I was going really? to Vail. Oh. And uh, I had a seven up. I don't know, my folks gave me a dime or something. And I sure love that trip. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, we were in Hemet, California. I was a teenager. We were down there visiting some of Dad's river people or something. And it was hot. It was horribly hot down there because Hemet's on the inside. It's not out on the coast. And uh, when we got done, whatever it was we doing, why they gave us, they uh, distributed Cokes, and Mom wouldn't let me drink one, and I was so mad. I, I I'll never forget how thirsty I was and how mad I was. Here was this nice cold, frosty Coke, and Mom said, "No, you don't drink that." She was very strong on words. Oh yeah. yeah, we lived in Hemet. Oh, did you? Yvonne and I did. Well, you know about the nice, cool weather. Mm -hmm. there. I don't yeah. remember. You. We lived in Hemet when I was pregnant with Danielle. Uh, what were you doing? We were, we were group home. We were parents, we were group home parents. parents. Eddie Lee Holmes from Boys. Oh, yeah. We lived, that was our first assignment was in. It was a ranch Hemet. before you went on the fire department. Uh -huh. Yeah. It was a ranch and we knew nothing about keeping pigs alive. We found that out. <laughs> Keeping pigs. pigs. <laughs> what is the cows? Or? You just feed them. <laughs> Remember the sow had piglets? Yeah. And she killed them all because we didn't want to stop her. <laughs> well, men can tell you how difficult it is to kill a pig. <laughs> I won't even go there. You're not even going to go there? Okay. No. That'll be between you and I? That's right. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> then don't bring it up. <laughs> I, I do remember, though. My memory is that Dad would say, okay, this is good. Ted, will you do this? Ted said, Bevan, take care of that, will you? Mm -hmm. Bevan say, Willard, Dad says this has got to be done. <laughs> Willard say, Otis, Dad wants this taken care of. <laughs> Otis say, Lynn, go do that. And then we would look around and there was no one to pass the buck. <laughs> <laughs> well, even before I remember you, uh, with the funny books, comic books. Me? You, sitting under the willow tree, and you'd, you'd keep Willard and Otis and Lynn busy Absolutely. while you read, and you Absolutely. were the boss. <laughs> you were the boss. Absolutely. They were my little slaves. They were my <laughs> roping, my cattle when I roped. I'd run them off, and then I'd rope them. Hey, I, that was a pretty good deal. You remember the field west of the house? bottom of the hill where Jacobs lived there. Yeah. We had a big um, pit of not sawdust sha shavings. Mm -hmm. Big pit of shavings. You guys played army and you buried me in the shavings and you played army over, over me. You were protecting me. I was the 
but I remember being buried in shavings and people running back and forth over the kids playing protecting me or yeah. playing army over me while I was buried in shavings. We had a lot of army going on. We had some weird looking guns, but we had yeah. some looked just like sticks, but we had a, we had a, a lot of army going up around the monkey tree and all yeah. up through there. That was all army territory. You go up there and fight those wars, those bad guys. Yeah, those are the days. I remember Dad had this cornfield right next to the house, and we used to go up out on the road, and you know, it had an open area where you go up to Eichenberger's, mm -hmm. and we'd build a fire and roast corn out there, play kick the can. Mm -hmm. A two-tire bonfire. Yes. Yeah. Two-tire. Two-tire oh bonfire. Oh my gosh, they were big. That was when we were sledding down the hill. Well, I, I guess what you'd done is you'd burned all the rest of the tires and we only had two left. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that was fun. We used bonfires and kicked the can and, oh, uh, what memories. Uh, you can't do that anymore. You have to have a permit. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. I thought you were talking about kick the we're can. Talking, we're permit. talking about blinding here. Yeah, I know, but even in blinding you have to have a permit now, don't you? Not, if you're, not if you're Mike Bradford. Yeah. <laughs> he burned that whole canal area one day down there and set the whole... Of course, he's on the captain on the fire department when he did it, but he, he burned the whole canal area there down by June one day. Now you have to have a permit for little kids to sell lemonade at stand. Oh, absolutely. But not blinding, I bet you don't. Oh, no. So you guys moved up to the big city. Yeah. <laughs> and that well, happens. I don't think it's happened here, but we hear it on the news. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, have, we had to shut down our lemonade stand, didn't we? Because we couldn't afford to permit. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> now you're telling the story. Yeah. Well, like you said, tell some lies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you, have you got a good focus? Come in. Whoa. Woohoo. Whoa. Well, like, right there. See that huge score? Scar. scar. <laughs> well, if you, it's scar, not score. It's scar. <laughs> Who's telling this story? <laughs> tell it right. <laughs> tell it. I'm not going to tell you now. You hurt my feelings. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, he zoomed in on it. If you feel that, there's a hole there underneath the skin. Huh? And I was out east of town, like I usually was, and climbing in trees and everything, and I fell on a, a dead branch went in there, went quite deep into my leg. And so... I'm dying and everything, and so somebody ran up the house, and Bevan's dying, so Ted come down and picked me up and carried me all the way from uh, there back to the house, rescued me, and that didn't heal forever. It kept, I kept picking at it, and, and it just didn't heal, and finally, one day, Dad looked at it, and then it got a pair of pliers, and he pulled the... Uh, piece of wood out of there and that's why it wouldn't heal. And so when it healed it left to, you can feel there where part of that's part of that's gone. But my big brother came and rescued me and Aww. called me home. Well who would we throw on dirt clods to? And Which I, time? <laughs> I, I know but one of the times I hit him right in the eye. Me. Was that you? Yes. And I was so scared I went running up to the doctor and trying to Get him to come down and take care of you. I don't know. Yep. That. I don't remember, but I remember well, getting I, hit with that was clock. A, it was dead on. Yes, it was an excellent shot. <laughs> <laughs> shot. But the dirt wasn't supposed to be my eye. No, that, was, right. that was the problem. Well, Lynn, do you have any remembrances, being that you were younger, <clears throat> of Otis and um, Willard? Oh, yeah. Because they probably won't remember maybe some of those, you know. They were Otis, the three bears. Yeah. You know, Otis and I would leave Saturday morning with our guns, and Mom would say, be home before dark. 
She didn't care. Well, she cared. She was concerned, but she wasn't worried. She wasn't worried. So we'd take her guns. We'd just we'd just go out. We'd go out the canyon. We'd we'd shoot us a rabbit or something <coughs> and, and cook it for lunch, and and we'd be home before dark. Oh, we just had a wonderful time. But one time I remember, we were up to Jacobs, and they had an underground. They had the underground. Uh, what do they call them? Cave. Where they the root cellars? Root cellar. Had a root cellar. 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 <laughs> and say it right now. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and they had a, a chimney at the top, coming out of the top of the root cellar. And we were messing around, Willard and I think Otis and, and I and Jerry, we were just messing around, we had a broom. And somebody would go down in the root cellar and would throw a broom up through the, through the uh, chimney. Somebody up there would grab it, go back down, and we'd just switch <laughs> places like that. We'd grab the, the broom and go back we're down and throw, throw the, the broom back up. I was just we had fun. And so Willard took it, he went down, and I was waiting for him. And the broom didn't come. The broom didn't come. And I looked down to see where the broom was and pow, right in the, <laughs> right in the eye. And I remember Dad banished, he banished my eye up. I was, oh, pain. That was dumb. Well, the doctors used to come to the house in those days. Yeah. They took a call and made house calls. I have another question. Um, do you remember your grandpa Sam? Or you know anything about him? Did you ever have good times with him? Bevan can't doesn't remember anything much. Yeah, I about I remember your grandpa Sam. Sam. I never Sam Wright. Your grandpa Sam. Oh, I remember Wright. a lot about him. Okay, and then what Did about you remember grandpa? I mer remember him extremely well. I went with Dad to Salt Lake <laughs> and we went to visit him and I remember when he was in Monticello and when he was in the Shumway Apartments and then over with Aunt Nora. But what I meant when I said that is I never remember having a personal relationship with him. Oh, wow. You know, go and visit and just visiting or uh, put my arm around him or have him hold me or anything like that. He was like an uncle or something, you, you know, you'd say ho oh, oh. But as far as having a, a personal relationship with him, I never did. Yeah. Well, I knew him pretty well. And, uh, Midvale. Of course, were you around when we lived in Midvale? I was born in Midvale. What do you mean, did I well, around? You don't remember it. <laughs> no. So he remembers it well because he was born there. Yeah. Yeah. I know more about it than you do. That's my birthplace. <laughs> but Grandpa had a barber shop. Yeah. And I used to go over to the barber shop and sit there and, and talk. I don't remember what we did, but I know going to Grandpa's barber shop. And yeah. we'd whirl, he'd whirl us around in his chair. I remember those times. Yeah. He had I don't candy. remember any of that. He had candy for us. He was so good to us. Yeah. Right. You know, and then I went to Salt Lake and spent a week up there. And uh, But he he had married this other woman. I don't even remember her name. Jane. Jane. Jane, Jane Carswell. Mm -hmm. Is that who that was? Anyway. He'd go to work, and I went to the movies. <laughs> so he gave me some money, and so as soon as the theaters opened, I went to the theater and stayed all day. It was over with. I would go to another one. That's where he got addicted. Yeah, for a week. I must have taken in a uh, fifty movies. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I, I remember Grandpa Wright. Lawrence, I remember a specific one one time. Lawrence Rowley and I. We must have been. Fourteen, Lawrence, La Lawrence Shirley, and, and Ida's oh, oldest boy. Okay, we were we were good friends. They lived in Blanding, and <laughs> Lawrence and I, one day after school, we went down to the Shumway Apartments and we visited with Grandpa Wright. Mm -hmm. I remember we had a good visit with him, and but that's other other than seeing Grandpa Wright around, you know, I don't read. I don't remember it too he much. Smoked. Well, he they opened a barber shop in Monticello. Yeah. And I remember so, that. Oh, well, we stopped by there. Also, I had a liquor house. Talked to him. What did she say? I don't know. He, he also had a liquor house. I don't know whether we want that. 
Well, that's fine. But that was many, many years ago. That yeah. was way back in the before your time. That was before one. all of us' time. He that thought was he was excommunicated, but they found out he never was. It was not on the church record. I know, but he, he was told was. he was. <laughs> I know he was. Yeah, he's told he was, but it never officially happened. No. <laughs> and I remember, I you know, Mom with her word of wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, smoking was a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But with Grandpa Wright, I loved him so much and knew him, even though he smoked, it never entered my mind that that, that was a bad thing because yeah. he did it. He was good. I don't I remember him explain. smoking, but I'm sure he did. Oh, I'm sure he did too. Uh, I was going up past the Shumway Apartments one day, and this carload of guys pulled up, about three of them, in the car, and they said, Hey, Sam, come and have a beer. <laughs> so he came out, and they were all sitting there in the car drinking yeah. drinking beer. Yeah, when I was in Salt Lake, he, they'd go down this little pub, and he ordered me a beer. <laughs> in fact, at one time he says, Well, uh, Ted, would you like a beer? Oh. I said, no, thanks, I don't think so. <laughs> if Mother knew that, she would have died yeah. if you were there. He was drinking in front of you. Yeah. Well, I, I read somewhere where he was really a good man, and when there was a time of illness in Blanding, he was the one that every, he went around and took care of. Yeah, a lot he's of people. wonderful. He was yeah. a good man. Well, he was, you he was a good man. You remember who he taught how to sing? Yes, Heber J. Grant. That's Heber right. J. Grant. Yeah. He just wasn't a good example to the young people on the Word of Wisdom. <laughs> that's right. His Word of Wisdom was not a... And that's the only thing. Otherwise, he's a great guy. Well, he, even, he passed his barbering skills down. And my oldest brother... You had an old, older yeah, brother? Yeah. And he, he was in the Navy, and he gave somebody a haircut. Yeah. And they had to go to a barber with a towel over their head uh, and and get it kind of corrected and kind of fixed. Yeah. Uh, he said, you know what, Eddie? I like hair. And so he said, I'm going to the barber shop to get a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I already hacked him up. Who is that? I don't know. It was. What are one Shipmates. Of, one in the service man's home. <laughs> oh. We're down in the basement. Didn't have hardly any light. And, uh, well, I, I won't explain. <laughs> <laughs> problems I was having. <laughs> you notice something that they all part their hair on that side. And Dorothy has a tendency more too to what? The guys all part their hair on the right side. Our hair. It. Yeah, what about it? It's I would say it's interesting. Well, just, why, with the name like we got, why part it on the other yeah. side? <laughs> Come on, that and, would be a good to walk. And, and Dorothy's kind of tends to be that way too. She, you know, she, you, you kind yeah, of hold her hair that way. way. Mm -hmm. Well, part it on the right side. Kind of interesting. Side. Well, you do too. Gonna, short like yeah. yours. Kind of, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> we're not going to do left, we're yeah. going to be right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I, it was just an observation. I was just... You know, <laughs> Tim, let's see yours. Yeah, yeah Tim, he does. <laughs> Tim's got it right. And so does Dwayne. There's hope. <laughs> Not a great deal, but there is hope. hope. Did you well, guys know Grandpa? I mean, Grandma, right. Oh, yeah. Real well. I knew a lot better than I did Grandpa. Yeah, I She did. lived down the, down the bottom of the hill, and we all went at Christmas time. And but what about other day. times? Did you go down there and visit her? We have I did. Christmas Eve yeah. parties all the time, but when she had that new house out by Aunt Mabel's, LeBay and Irma and I, we were the same age, we went to visit, well, let's go visit Grandma. <laughs> so we knocked at the door, and Grandma comes to the door and invites us in, and we sat on the couch like this, and we couldn't think of anything to say, so we started to laugh. We giggled, and we hee-hawed, and we just got up and left. <laughs> so uh, Dad told me to go down to Grandma's place and clean out her chicken coop. Oh, yeah. And so I went down there and I cleaned out the chicken coop, and Grandma gave me 50 cents. Oh. I came home and wow. Dad, uh, Your 50 dad. cents was a lot of money. Yeah, it was. And Dad said, You take that 50 cents back and give it back to Grandma. Yeah. They're not supposed to accept any money. <laughs> 
But Dad, <laughs> you, you remember when Dad? Well, you don't. You were probably gone by this, but he had the the shop there in, down in Blanding. There, uh, lathe. He had these lathe. What in Lyman's? In Lyman's garage. garage. Yeah, back yeah, with, I remember that. I'd I'd go in and and clean the lathe, and Dad would give me I think ten cents. And I'd take the 10 cents, I'd go see a movie, and I'd buy, buy a candy bar with that 10 cents. <laughs> movies again, here we go. Uh, you guys are all addicted to movies. I'm not addicted. Uh, That's the only thing there was to do in a black I, I, I about fell over. I, this guy came and landed his airplane, his light airplane, on an alfalfa field down Sam, south. Samak. No, this was before oh, Samak. Before Samak, okay. Yeah. And he landed in an alfalfa field, and he was giving rides, and I don't know what it cost, but it was enough to be concerned with. And I thought, boy, I'd sure like to go for an airplane ride, but, you know, I don't have anything Dad. But anyway, I said, oh, you know. So I uh, went, and Dad was working the shop, and I said, Dad, I want to go fly in that airplane. He said, how much is it? And I told him he'd hand it to me. So I went down, and... Took a ride in the, we took off from the alfalfa field and come back on the, we went up around Blinding and you know how they always did on their tours and make a circle and then you come back and land. I did the same thing with Sam Eck. Did you? He was my first airplane. We had some X in San Diego, E-K. E-C-K. I don't know how he's... E-C-K. E-C-K. Um, these were just... He was... Uh, you remember? He came in again. He, uh, he came in with the Globe Swift, which was a low wing, a lot faster uh, metal airplane. And then he went from there or somewhere else, and him taking somebody for a ride, and they were both killed. They crashed, and they were both killed. Oh. Who was it that we went? Who flew the airplane when you, I think, you and Glenn and me, or me and you? Lynn. Somewhere? With Lynn me. did. Huh? With me, we flew from San Diego to Blandy. Yeah, was that you? Yeah, yeah that was yeah. him. I, I asked him when they when they got to Blandy and I went down to the airport and I said, Lynn, how many hours you got in this airplane? He just laughed at me. He never did tell me, but I know what. <laughs> and then he went over to where? To refuel and couldn't start it. Had to get help, someone to tell him how to start it in the heat or something. I don't remember that. Yeah, you told me the story. This. You couldn't get it going, you couldn't get it started. And so there was some guy there with the same type of aircraft, and you went and talked to him, and there's something weird that you that would be opposite of what you'd normal, normally do, either uh, to the heat or the cold, I don't know. So how'd we get back to Blind, uh, back to San Diego when you flew us to Blind? Well, we thought we flew back, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, did yeah. we? Yeah, did we you know. I don't remember. Was that the trip that we... That we Got into a storm and, and spent the night in. I don't remember where it was. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah we. I the weather was bad, and so. I can't remember where it was. You was a Havasu, wasn't it? I don't remember where it was, but we touched down and stayed there because yeah. of the weather ahead of us was just t terrible, and and I I wanted to be an old bold I wanted to be an old pilot, not a bold pilot. So. <laughs> So we spent the night there and then flew on into Blanding. Yeah, that. Oh. Now that was for Uncle, or that was Aunt Mabel's funeral, was it? I, I have no yeah. idea. I think it was Aunt Mabel's funeral. We flew I, out I don't for, remember why you were, I just remember going down the airport. Yeah, I think it was Aunt Mabel's funeral we flew up for. What airport did you use in San Diego, Gillespie? Yeah, yeah, we flew out of Gillespie. And Mom, do you remember what you made Dad do before he got on the plane? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You got the waiting of the airplane. <laughs> I just had this horrible thought. I was scared to death, scared to death of um, of Lynn not being able to bring him back no, home. See, small, small, small airplanes. Planes. And so the thought just came to me. Oh my gosh, there he goes, and there's no will. So I <laughs> had him write a will on the wing of the airplane, <laughs> <laughs> and the wing left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I flew with you once too, and Mother was 
with us. And Mother tried to pretend she wasn't scared, but she was scared <laughs> to death. And, uh, uh, and you kept saying, hey, nothing to worry about. We can land in an alfalfa field. Then we're flying over the Grand Canyon. I said, yeah, where are you going to land here? 